Hello my friends from yearofenglish.com I'm Ravi from englishharmony.com and I hope you remember me from the previous videos where we touched upon subjects such as counting in English when you are engaged in some routine tasks and correcting your own speech when you do self-practice and at the end of the day it all boils down to engaging in a lot of self-practice if you're really serious about your overall fluency improvement so basically me and my blog is all about speaking in English, you know, speaking with yourself for that matter, because that's one of the greatest tools of developing your fluency, your ability to speak, because when you speak with others, you might be stressed out, whereas when you speak with yourself, there's no one to hear you, so you are okay to speak however you want, whatever you want, you know, you can basically allow yourself to say anything and then test things, you know, try out new things. And that's when we have to touch upon the subject of looking up new vocabulary. You see, I am a great believer in looking up and learning vocabulary that you have to use in your life, as opposed to learning some abstract vocabulary lists and then trying to use those words in your life. It doesn't necessarily make sense because you might be learning vocabulary that is not relevant in your particular circumstances, you have your own life, you have certain types of people you communicate with on a daily basis, you have your own job, your studies, whatever, your interests, and it's all quite limited in a sense. Obviously, the array of subjects that can be discussed related to all those aspects of your life is huge, but still, it doesn't make sense just to take some abstract vocabulary list and learn words that you probably won't even use in your daily conversations. You are just going to waste your time. That's all that is. So my suggestion is, and it's all based upon my own experience, because I've been speaking with myself for years on end, and I've been learning vocabulary and phraseology that I couldn't think of. So basically what I would do is I would wake up in the morning and then just start speaking with myself while taking a shower or preparing my breakfast or whatever while taking my dog for a walk, you know? And I would just try to plan my day, for instance, in English. And then whenever I would think of something that I cannot explain in English properly, I would memorize what it is that I couldn't say and I would put it down on a piece of paper later on, you know? But I would make the point to describe it in English, not in my native language, because one of the biggest mistakes that we foreigners do is we explain things in our native language. We write down vocabulary words in English and then the explanation in our native language, thereby creating wrong vocabulary associations, because that way, whenever you think of something to say, your native language is going to mix with English words in your head. Therefore, it's crucial to eliminate your native language altogether because once you've gone past the beginning stages of the English studies and you are okay to understand what I'm talking right now, for instance, you are perfectly fine explaining the most complicated English concepts using other English words, similar words, plain language, you know? And uh, so basically, whatever words, whatever things you cannot describe in English properly, write down, look up how this or that particular thing is called in English and then provide the description using other English words. And then later on, you can use Google and you may want to check out this article where I'm describing a very simple yet very effective way of looking up how things are said in a native-like way on Google. And uh, there's another article of a similar nature. You may want to check it out too. I published a while ago, which provides even more advice and more tips and tricks on how it's done. And Google, by the way, is obviously the internet and the Google. The Google has actually lately become something like a synonym for the internet because Google is the biggest, by far the biggest search engine online, as we all know it, right? So it's a massive, massive 
database of information, so to speak, at our disposal, at our fingertips. So basically, whenever you can't say something or you're not sure of how this or that particular thing is said, use Google. Don't forget to use quotation marks because you are looking for the exact speech patterns, you know? You don't want to enter like three or four word combination, a phrase without quotation marks because the search results Google is going to return are going to contain one or more or all of those words, you know? So you may want to use the quotation marks and that way you'll make sure if that speech pattern, if that particular word combination is actually used by native speakers, which is going to be reflected in the search results. If there's thousands and tens of thousands and even million, millions of search results containing that particular word combination, it's a very valid speech pattern, you know. But if uh, there are no results returned, for instance, or very few, just one or two or three, it means that it's a very unnatural word combination, so you, you may want to adjust it omit words or change words around and see how it's actually said in real life, you know, because written language is pretty much the same as the spoken language. There are differences, but they're not huge, you know. So basically, this is the tip of the day. You speak with yourself and then you can think of this or that particular thing, how it's actually said in English. Then you write it down, write down what you can't find and then later on go online and try to find that word or a phrase because phraseology is what we're focused upon not so much individual words it's more about phrases word combinations and it's of the utmost importance my dear friend from yourofenglish.com that whenever you actually learn look up individual words always write them down in context never write down just individual words always put them in context in two or three word combination, basically words that that word goes together with and their so-called collocations and uh, write them down and then, which is even more important, try to put that word or the word combination into context. Just try to think of some sample sentences and to make sure that you're using that word or that particular collocation correctly type it into Google and see what context that particular phrase or word is normally used in so that you have a general idea of how that phrase is used because sometimes we foreign English speakers and please note I'm not saying non-native because I hate the term non-native English speakers you may want to check out this article where I'm talking about why I would never refer to myself or other foreigners as non-native speakers because it's a little bit derogatory, I believe, you know, non-native kind of implies we don't have nationality. But we all have nationalities, right? We have some foreign background, so therefore I think we are foreigners, foreign English speakers, rather than non-native English speakers. But anyway, uh, let's not stray off the subject. Let's get down to the business, which was trying to figure out what is the best way of looking for new vocabulary, learning it and making sure that you can actually use it. So basically, we foreigners sometimes would use English vocabulary in a way we would use the corresponding word or phrase in our native languages. But as I said, we have to eliminate our native language completely. It's eliminated from the equation when we are engaged in English-related activities. We have to think in English, write in English, speak in English, read in English. It's all about the English language and English language only. There's no Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Spanish, Latvian, because I'm a Latvian myself. It's a fairly small country, so you probably might not have heard of it. But anyway, such a country exists, and that's my native country, right? So, basically, I don't use my native language at all. When I speak in English, I speak in English only, and that's the key to fluency. So basically, what we looked at today is the following. You have to engage in self-practice, because that's the most efficient way to find vocabulary that you're going to use in your life, because all the things that you're going to talk about are going to be closely related to your daily routines, things you 
you, you, you encounter on a daily basis objects or whatever, and then if you can't think of how, how this or that particular thing is called, just look it up in a dictionary or on Google, and uh, that's how we find words worth memorizing, and then put those words in context, write them down on a piece of paper, and then repeat them, and put them in sample sentences, and repeat those sentences, and drill those words, those word combinations into your brain, therefore making it your second nature to speak them out loud, and then try to use them in your next day's spoken English practice. Dedicate five to ten minutes to revisiting yesterday's phrases or vocabulary and always remember, always put it into context and try to basically go back to the same topic you were discussing yesterday, for instance, and use the newly acquired vocabulary that way. And then obviously use it again and again until it becomes your second nature, which means until you can use it automatically without much thinking. That's the most efficient way of learning new English vocabulary as opposed to learning some abstract vocabulary lists, which is by and large a waste of time. I strongly believe so and my own experience backs this claim up. Okay, my friends from yearofenglish.com, thanks for watching this video and you're welcome to post any comments below and ask any questions you may have in this regard, you know, in the connection, in connection with acquiring new English vocabulary, and I'll try to be as helpful as I possibly can. Okay, thanks guys for watching this video, and see you soon again. Bye-bye.